In today's video, I will cover how Grayscale thinks about layer 1 cryptocurrency. I think everyone should watch this video so they can see how businesses look at crypto, specifically the monetization of change, aka how they make money. We tend to see things by hype and technology, which do matter. If you watch this video, you will develop a more traditional approach to how it all works, which will enlighten you. Trust me on that. My mind was blown by what I read. Seeing cryptocurrency the way a business does is probably the best way to pick a cryptocurrency for the long term and see it for what it really is. My name is Crypto Randy and I am a crypto trader and enthusiast. I make videos to help speed up your own research. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. This article by Grayskill called The Battle for Value in Smart Contract Platforms starts by debunking the notion that cryptocurrency can't be seen like traditional investments. It depicts that value accrual is connecting a flywheel that brings together fees, network usage with token valuation and decentralization of network. So value is created based on those metrics. We have the fees people use while using the network, the price of a token from usage, and the security of a network. These are fundamental measures of smart contract platforms like Ethereum and Solana. An example, Ethereum produced 2 billion in fees in 2023. They have been around for years and they were a mature project. That maturity is shown in its ability to make fees over time. A project like Solana and the time of writing of this article has made 200 million in fees. That means they're showing signs of maturation. Objects can be compared by other metrics such as market cap. However, even projects with similar market caps can have vastly different fee generation. Even though Solana has a market cap of 78.3 billion, their fee generation is 200 million compared to Ton with a market cap of 18.2 billion and a fee revenue of 12 million, meaning that Solana makes more per billion than Ton does. The strength and weaknesses of projects and their maturation can be very different. Some projects generate revenue with high transactions and low fees like Solana. Others with relatively less transactions and significantly higher fees. However, network fee revenue is closely correlated with market cap. Just look at exhibit two. Grayscale thinks that the close relationships between fees and market cap is pretty partially because of how crucial network fee revenue is to token value accrual. I often cover this in the tokenomics sections of my videos. You guys should look because I cover tokenomics because I know how important they are. Value accrual means that the protocol structure tokens in a manner that links network activity with long-term sustainability value for that token. What that means is that the token, be it E or serve, will remain healthy, relevant, and intrinsically valuable, giving the health and growth of those metrics. Different stages of that value accrual can be seen in the following examples of Ethereum, Solana, and Near Protocol. To give a car analogy, Ethereum is a Range Rover while Solana is a Toyota. Ethereum is a premium chain that had sky high network fees and on May 1st, 2022, the average daily network fee reached $200, which is a lot of money for just one transaction. I mean, that's a lot. I recall the time many retail investors found Ethereum's network unusable. Some turned away from Ethereum at that point. However, in terms of revenue from fees, it generated over $2 billion in 2023. They killed it. They made a lot of money. Ethereum's fees include a base fee and tips which are paid to jump the line. Base fees are burned and tips go to the validators, people running the pools. In 2023, that was a burn of 1.7% for the ETH token and 390 million in the rewards to validators. As the price of Ethereum went up, the supply went down. This is good to economics and a good burn mechanism. The charts and tables listed thus far can be reproduced for free on the internet. And I, I wanted to mention that so you guys can find those charts and use them you know, next time. And I wish I would have known that sooner. In the article under the chart is the source link. One of my favorites is the ETH supply and ETH price chart, which shows the burn mechanism. You can Google the glass node ETH supply, ETH price. The first search item is the correct one. You can then highlight the next one from November 2023 to the present. Easy peasy. As the circulating supply decreases, price increases, which makes sense, right? Less supply, higher price. I plan on using this metric in the future to gauge when price is likely to break out from that 
bear market. So can you. Other layers are available with similar information, although not all chains have this, especially newer ones. Uh, they tend to lack on-chain metrics. Clearly Ethereum has reached the stage of maturation and proven its value accrual, which you can think of as a successful business model. People transact on the Ethereum blockchain and pay a premium for the service, even though other chains are cheaper to transact. Ethereum is more developed and more secure. There are more staking pools available that make people feel safe when using them. Every new crypto project builds a bridge to Ethereum to transact with it. Ethereum's ability to monetize is reflected in its valuation of 150 billion as of June 6, 2024, six times larger than the next competitor. That's market cap. So the Ethereum model captures fee revenue. Solana, on the other hand, is a high performance chain that is figuring out value accrual. Solana, in contrast, is much faster with 335 transactions per second and a low cost of four cents per second on average. So that's quite a bit difference just to use transactions to pay for things. In 2023, Sam made significantly more transactions than Ethereum, but only made 13 million in network fees versus Ethereum's 2 billion. So it's a huge difference. A year or two as the making of this video, in 2024, Solana has generated six times the fees it had in 2023 so they've really outdone themselves so far this indicates that high transactions can also generate economic value earlier this year solana was the chain for meme coins there was a lot of excitement around that i remember and the price of sol was pumped recently to a high of 191 dollars as of the making of this video since april 1st the average transaction fee on solana has been four cents way cheaper than ethereum's four dollars and eighty cents but more expensive than arbitrum's a layer two which had a price of 0 0.01 cents if you have ever used arbitrum you pay a fee on the ethereum network to move to the arbitrum which then saves you money, but you, you still have to move out of Ethereum. To address this uh, with Ethereum, they came out with a Denkun upgrade to lower fees. That upgrade was part of a much larger plan. Initially, Ethereum required mining. When Ethereum first came out, that was the standard, like when Bitcoin came out, that was just everybody was doing mining. Now to address fees, uh, they are moving to staking, which is a long-term plan that will take seven to maybe five years it's gonna be a long time this time on gives room for other layer ones to take market share and realistically ethereum will probably never be as cheap as four cents it just won't be this slow to change aspect comes with maturity of the chain they can't just build from the ground up like newer chains can in contrast to ethereum and solana the article then moves to near protocol new is a smart contract platform that recently gained the significant adoption but has not yet demonstrated value accrual, meaning it has not made significant network fees. Near is the platform that supports Kakai and Hot Protocol. These two dApps have the most users in all of crypto. Near leads all smart contract platforms with 1.4 million daily active users and it's competitive in throughput with the fastest chains. Throughput meaning a finality start to finish. When you make a purchase, you receive the confirmation really fast. And I didn't realize that Nier had that many active users. That was really interesting. However, despite that much activity, Nier only generates 4.1 million in fees year to date of this article. It can be said that Nier is less mature than Solana and especially Ethereum, but it's an up and coming chain. It's positioned to move into monetization because of its large user base. If Nier is able to scale or increase average transaction fees without reducing network activity, it will move to the next tier. If you want to learn more about Nier, make sure to click the link in the description below. I made a deep dive into Nier's great video. All smart contract platforms show different stages of development, with Ethereum being proven in value accrual and maturity, Solana with a proven user base that has shown signs of monetization, and Nier with a proven user base that not yet generated meaningful income. With all this talk of maturity and fee revenue, it's important to note that the nuances of tokenomics matter. Ethereum's fees are partially burned, and this leads to an increase in token value. Priority fees then go 100% to validators. In Solana, 50% of transaction fees are burned, and the remaining 50% go to stakers. However, a recent governor vote made that 100% of Solana 
priority fees go to validators. This is similar but different to Ethereum as I have made videos, I have seen many different fee structures and I cover them in the top economics part and they're just they're not the same. Some chains have set limits like Bitcoin, other chains have no max supply with a 9% inflation rate like IOS, which I'm gonna make a video on soon, so watch, make sure to watch out for that one. Drastic changes can happen like massive token burns no one is expecting. Also, if a security is compromised, new tokens can be minted and new blockchains created to deal with hacks. This happened to Ethereum, they were hacked and moved to a new chain. Dramatic moves like that tend to happen earlier on in a cryptocurrency's life cycle. A keen eye to economics must always be kept because of the high rate of change in the crypto markets. And the article concluded with the following thoughts. Value accrual is a flywheel that connects fees, network usage, and token valuation, and the security and decentralization of a network. While fees generated are an important metric for maturity of a network, it must be seen with the context of the cryptocurrency ecosystem, especially for a layer one, like what is built on top of that. A big gap can bring in a lot of new users to chains and generate income, but its overall ecosystem could be small. What good is, has to be measured with both fundamental metrics such as e-generation, market cap, and active users, but also paired with overall ecosystem growth and use case of dApps. As an example, can Ethereum continue to grow its fees on its mainnet despite relatively high average costs? Can ETH keep growing fees with alternative layer 2 activity? How can Solana keep monetizing and keep its chain cost low enough so that it doesn't lose users? Can Nier attempt to monetize or will it forego meaningful levels of fee revenue generation to keep attracting users? Answers to questions like these can help investors make choices on what to buy and why. Knowing where to look in an industry that is so new is hard to do. Many traditional investors have said there is no fundamental value to cryptocurrency. Maybe if they had heard of value accrual and the measures discussed in this article, they may have thought differently. One thing I am certain of is that cryptocurrency is here to stay. The tokenization of money and financial assets is the future. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel.